What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I, I don't know. It's after midnight here, California uh, time, so it's uh, pretty early on this Sunday morning here. October 29th, 2023. Uh, it is about 12 a.m., 12.08 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the globe. Let's go ahead and check this out, see what we got. Shows a 3.4 earthquake into the area of, uh, looks like just south of Taiwan here, across the western edge of the uh, Filipino plate. We did see some larger scale earthquake activity here in the last couple hours, including a 6.4 earthquake here around the Vanuatu area. We have been watching uh, some deeper scale movement activity here across Tonga Trench with some surface adjustment further west here across the plate boundary. Uh, this is just right in the middle of where we would expect to see the uh, pressure gradient kicking up. 6.4 being reported by the EMSC model. The USGS reporting this 6.0. So a couple, uh, a little bit uh, different magnitude differences there. South of Port Villa, Vanuatu region, about 79 kilometers deep within this area. As you can see, this area was our quiet zone. If you watched our earthquake update uh, this morning... And uh, last night, we kind of pinpointed this area here for our quiet zone, and that has filled in fairly nicely uh, over the past uh, 12 hours or so in this area. That leaves, uh, well, there's still quite a bit of earthquake activity stretching up across the Indonesia Islands area. As you can see, some deeper movement quakes here, including this one. This, this ring right here is raised well off the globe. Uh, that there is along the Java Trench or close nearby the Java Trench area. Uh, not really seeing that activity stirring up here on the USGS map, but it's definitely there on the EMSC model. Uh, of course, the uh, USGS map here tends to show only 4.0 and above. Far as the international communities go, the EMSC model shows some of the uh, smaller earthquakes here on the globe. So, continue to watch this area. Um... Yeah, I, you know, who's to say if that's a 6.4 or a 6.0 back here? Just You just never know. All right, uh, some earthquake activity here across the northern Mariana Islands area earlier this morning. That was a 5.3, pretty deep into this area. That's indicating some strain out here across the western areas of the Pacific Plate. That could show uh, some surface adjustment going on here pretty soon. I uh, a little odd here. Let's see here. We got a 5.3 showing up here. One o'clock in the morning. Um, well, okay, I see. It's almost past that 24-hour period. Period. That's what's going on here. So, right there. I had to add it back onto the globe here. Uh, so, looking at the globe in general here, man, goodness, what do we got there? 4.4 showing up. That's a kind of an older earthquake up there into the area of the Kurokamachaka Trench. Uh, where we did see some earthquake activity as well. Just kind of been a, a fairly eventful day. A 4.5 Curl Islands. Pretty deep here. 113 kilometers deep into this area of the subduction zone. Uh, very active, as mentioned here, across this area of the plate boundary. Also, we did see some further activity out here in western Afghanistan. Very odd area to see some earthquake activity, but... Not in the past month or so. Uh, we've seen quite a few sixes, quite a few fives, quite a few fours out there in the last 30 days in this area of western Afghanistan. We're talking about 38 earthquakes of uh, some pretty large magnitudes there, including a 6.3, a 6.3, and a 5.9, 6.3, and a 6.3. So, yeah, quite a bit of earthquake activity in a zone that is not really historically active so there's definitely something brewing out here i think in terms of uh, some larger scale plate adjustment going on across this area of western afghanistan uh today 5.0 and a 4.8 a little bit of activity out here outside the rift zones here in the africa area 4.5 and a 4.6 ambia area uh, looks like about 10 kilometers deep or so. Of course, the rift zone extends out here across this area. And one day will be a, a beautiful sea feature. Uh, let's see what else we got here across the region. Hawaii, anything major going on out here aside from the typical earthquake activity? Uh, the Kilauea volcano 
Still watching that just for now. An earthquake activity, a general earthquake swarm out there, along with inflation. Let's go ahead and check out the latest data here from the Kilauea Volcano. Uh, we'll go ahead and bring this up here and see what we have for our tilt meters go. And uh, it looks like things are kicking back up here across the past two days. This is inflation. This is the chart showing the elevated inflation here across the summit area. And this is the last 30 days of inflation data across the summit of Kilauea Volcano. And um, I don't know. We're not quite above the uh, previous inflation level here earlier uh, this week, or I'd say probably 10 days or so ago. Uh, but we're still kind of rising up here, but not quite the peak level as what we had seen here in the prior, prior uh, inflation uh, graphs there. So we'll continue to watch that and see if anything changes there across the uh, Kilauea Volcano here in the future. Um, far as earthquake activity goes across Puerto Rico, handful of earthquakes out there, including some twos and threes, generally small earthquake activity. California, what do we got going on out here across the southern portion of the state? Well, let's bring up the last 2.5 and above. Doesn't look like anything major. We did see a 2.7. Rancho Cucamonga, California area. That is in a, uh, uh, it's a pretty clustered area here in plate dynamics. You got the San Andreas Fault here in the dark red line and numerous other fractures up here on the Pacific side of the plate boundary kind of being smashed up against each other. Uh, that 2.7 occurring uh, just a couple hours, a few hours ago, about 10 kilometers deep or so. Aside from that, generally small microquake activity across the rest of the state of California. Really not seeing anything major going on across Northern California there. And of course, a handful of earthquakes there across Mount St. Helens. As uh, far as tremor activity goes, let's go ahead and check out the Cascadia tremor. See if there's any strain going on out here. Well, I wouldn't call 13 epicenters of tremor. A major strain event. This is actually a pretty weak event out there. And it has been... Pretty much a weak year in terms of Cascadia Trimmer here. Now, what it means, uh, well, basically, we're either to the point of where we're so wound up there at the subduction zone that then we're not seeing any further trimmer activity downstream, or there's just not a whole lot of activity um, leaning up here against the West Coast. I am kind of leaning towards the first that we are pretty wound up here against the West Coast here in terms of pressure gradients. And that includes the Cascadia subduction zone. If everything is so tight here, if you think about it, at the subduction zone levels, right, the tremor activity occurs generally because this Juan de Fuca plate, let me bring up the area here again. Uh, the tremor activity occurs because the Juan de Fuca plate, which is this area right here, is being slowly pushed underneath this area here at the North American plate to the east, right? There's, there's some gradual subduction zone uh, activity going on here. So if everything is super tight here in terms of pressure gradients, we would not see Cascadia tremor activity because everything is wound so tight here that there's no slippage going on at the area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Or that, that's my leading option there that I think, anyway, as far as the theory goes, theory goes uh, across this area. The other theory could be that uh, there's just not a whole lot of pressure gradients going on in general. That's why we're not seeing a whole lot of tremor activity here in the last uh, year or so, since about October of last year. Uh, but I'm kind of leaning more towards that this thing's pretty wound up. So we'll continue to watch that area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, for some activity up here in the Gulf of Alaska. Well, I should say north of Juneau. This area in the Covenant Life area of Alaska has been pretty active here over the last 24 hours, including about 17 earthquakes of, well, some various magnitudes. Um, well, this is only shown in the last 24 hours, but we did see some larger scale activity here prior to this movement uh, yesterday in the daytime. I don't know. It's right now. It's uh, Sunday, so probably two days ago. Okay, I can't. You know, if you want to get technical here, it was back on the Friday time period, but today's Sunday, so kind of a late update, I know. But uh, wanted to get one in here real quick before bedtime. 
Um, let's see what we got going on out here in the Middle East besides uh, a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of stuff out here. Hopefully everyone's paying attention to this activity out here uh, with Israel and whatnot. Uh, not going to go into that because I don't cover politics, but uh, it's very it's very important everyone pays attention out here. Um, aside from the Afghanistan activity, one earthquake outside of um, Bihaban, Haran, it looks like, Iran, 4.3 earthquake there, uh, just outside the Gulf area, uh, 10 kilometers deep or so uh, earlier this evening, along with a 4.8 in the, the western Afghanistan area. So definitely seeing some plate dynamics stirring up out here. Uh, in some unusual zones space weather activity well we are dipping back down here i have a uh, uh what i'm gonna do here i think um i i do appreciate the solar ham site and the NOAA prediction center here the uh well at least the space weather prediction center in terms of the current solar flare threat but i don't always agree with the current solar flare threat like right now they're showing a 40 percent chance for a c flare in flare 10 uh, let's see what we got here. If I see anything that would be capable of producing any type of flaring, uh, maybe down here. What I'm going to do here, a little change here on the channel is, uh, incorporate my own, um, forecast here in flare threat level. Right now we have the, um, uh, let me bring up, back up the solar activity here. Right now, I have the uh, solarham.net website, which I appreciate Kevin 100% as far as his, uh, his um, website goes. And, and definitely suggests this for uh, latest information in solar weather. But he gets his information from the NOAA website. And sometimes NOAA can be wrong. Uh, and sometimes they can be a little uh, underestimated. But I am going to incorporate my own... Uh, solar flare threat here from now on. I think I'll, we'll start that up tomorrow. Um, and you'll see that instead of the solar flare threat, which is uh, located, uh, hold on a second here, go back here, right up there at the top level above the, um, the x-ray chart, I will incorporate my own flare threat level based on my observations here of what I see across this area. And that may be more real time because I'm not for sure how often these are updated. Um, I look at this like almost every single hour. So I'm going to base my observations and um, my studies in terms of solar flare threat um, every hour and update that there on the, uh, on the channel. So look for that here tomorrow. I'll try and incorporate that. Uh, the only area that I see of enhancement maybe of some sea flare activity is this region down here on the south eastern quadrant of the sun uh, there's a little area that uh you know for solar maximum i wouldn't even give this a second glance i'm not even joking um but we are in a minimal stage right now in terms of solar flare activity so this is about the only flare area that i would keep an eye on in terms of uh maybe some sea flare activity but i honestly don't see any in flare threat and that's why i'm going to uh i'm going to incorporate my own solar flare threat level i think that'd be pretty cool here for the channel um just based on my observation because i think 10 percent chance is a little overblown and that's not kevin's fault that's from the uh, noaa website but uh we'll, we'll figure that out here tomorrow uh we are seeing a little bit of uptick here in the solar weather department in terms of aurora so we are getting a little bit of enhancement here from the um well, it was a CME that uh, kicked off here a couple days ago, along with uh, there is some um, high-speed solar wind stream. Now, 66 here has been facing us over the past three days or so. As since, you know, scooted further over towards the eastern limb, uh, western limb of the sun. Uh, but that high-speed solar wind data, it's solar wind stream, is uh, going to be kicking up here in uh, the next couple nights potentially tonight uh, maybe a little bit later uh tomorrow night maybe even halloween but it, over the next couple nights here we should be on guard here for some potential g1 class storming 
and that is due primarily to uh, the CME and also the main threat, which is the uh, high-speed solar wind stream flowing from that coronal hole directly at Earth. So we'll continue to watch that. Right now, solar wind stream is somewhat high and kicking up auroras up there around uh, the Alaska and Canada area. Not seen so much into the northern tier states, but this is just generally a light uh, probability of a for, uh, the uh, auroras up there across those regions. So we'll continue to watch that, folks, but uh, look for some a couple, uh, a couple changes there tomorrow in the uh, solar weather department. I think I'm going to include my own forecast out there. I mean, I should. I'm studying, uh, kind of mastering right now in my physical science degree and taking quite a few astronomy classes. And goodness, uh, talk about some hardcore mathematics uh, that's in there. So uh, we've studied a lot in terms of uh, solar flare activity, sunspot activity, and just stars in general and how they behave in their mag uh, magnetic structure uh, with the polar regions and how they affect the uh, sunspots out there. It's pretty crazy. So I'll, I'll kind of incorporate that into my own uh, little format. Um, what else do we have out here? Weather patterns here. I was just looking at this. Oh, goodness. Um, thermo Thermodynamics out here. I want to check out the... Uh, not this one, maybe this one right here. Right now, we do have some cooler temperatures out here, as you can see across a good portion of Northern Plains, stretching down in Texas as well. That's associated with a low pressure, as you can see, that's gonna follow that all the way down into Texas. And Halloween's gonna be awfully cold out here, well below normal for portions of Texas, all the way up into the Midwest area. These colors up here, these darker purples and pinks, well, that's some chilly area air uh, back here across the West Coast. Not so much. We do have some warmer temperatures coming in there for Halloween. Not warm in the sense of hot, but uh, average or slightly above average temperatures out there for the West Coast. And um, unfortunately, well, looks like that's going to hang around there for at least a good portion of the week of November for the West Coast areas. And I'm hoping things change. If you look, it's a mixed bag of everything going on out here across the states right now. And that's due to the, uh, well, a whole lot of dynamics going on here in the northern hemisphere of the Earth. We're talking about El Nino kicking up here as well. So that's going to play a major part in terms of weather activity out here across the states. We'll continue to update uh, that when it becomes available. Uh, what do we got going on out here? One earthquake. In Hawaii right now, 2.0. Still kind of watching this, folks. I mean, there's been, uh, you know, obviously an influx of magma below this area. Uh, a huge influx, I think, within this area. Eventually, uh, I don't know if uh, Timothy has mentioned it here on the live stream, but eventually we'll see, we'll see new islands out here uh, across the southeastern edge of uh, this area. As the hot spot, the Pacific Plate moves over this hot spot area. And that's just, uh, let me show you guys here real quick. The Pacific Plate's moving towards the northwest. See the Hawaii Islands out here? You can follow that trend out here. If you look at the general plate dynamics here, you can follow the old hot spot. These used to be islands out here. Uh, the old Hawaii Islands, if you really think about it, these are called seamounts, but uh, generally those, uh, those hot spots out there, or the uh, islands out there, have been eroded and degraded, degraded over time. And where we're at right now is right here. But it's not going to last for long. I mean, in our lifetime, it probably will. Um, but far as long-term geographical, ge geological processes go, this will continue to move off in this direction here unless something changes across the plates out here. But new islands will form. These islands will be no more. Enjoy it while you have it out there on the big island. Uh, never been out there. I, I would love to. And, one of these days, but the scary thought is being uh, out there with a whole bunch of people stranded out there. I, I would like to find myself on a unpopulated region of Hawaii somewhere. I don't know if anyone knows about any unpopulated areas, but that's where I would want to be. 
I would not want to be around Honolulu, for example. That's a major city out there, and that I, I just can't do that. There's too many people. So if I'm going to enjoy this area, it has to be away from people. <laughs> That's just the facts. I like my scenery without people. Um, so we'll watch this earthquake activity here. And, uh, you know, there's definitely stuff brewing up here. There's an influx of magma going on here. Uh, how long it will take before we see the eruptive status up here? Who knows? But main thing is watch watch for the earthquake activity. Watch for the inflation data. And uh, we'll continue to, you know, report back on it. All right. Uh, what do we got here for seismic data? Anything major going on? Looks pretty calm here across the uh, seismograph stations for now. Little spike of an earthquake right there as the update comes in. Southern California, nothing big. It looks like maybe one of these smaller quakes coming in here. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it hasn't popped in yet because that station is specifically right around this area. All right, folks, have a good one. Stay safe out there tomorrow, Sunday. I will take care. Catch you guys back here tomorrow. Well, it's tomorrow, right? We'll catch you guys back here later.